Hello, and welcome to the third part of this set of tutorials on how to work with masks in Blender. In the first section, we talked about how to create a mask inside of the movie clip editor. In the second one, we talked about how to make use of it inside of the video sequence editor by adding it as a mask modifier. And now we're going to talk about how to animate the mask, because unless you are creating a mask for something that never moves, you will need to make changes to the mask over time. As an example, right now I have a mask set up. It's my elder sprite mask being applied to this character here, and it looks fine for this frame to remove the face from the picture entirely. But if I move over just a single frame, we'll see that immediately we can now see the character's face. The mask is now no longer working. Before we talk about how to animate a mask, let's talk about animation in general and see an example uh, here in the video sequence editor. I have two color strips that I have set up for animation and I'm going to hit the play button now so we can see how it looks. So as you can see, we have this blue color bar, which is moving at a steady rate from left to right, whereas this green color bar slowly kind of ramps up to its speed and then it actually overtakes it here and then it slows down at the finish. So how does that work? Inside of Blender, what we do is we establish what are called keyframes. So for this blue color strip, what I did was I set a keyframe for the position x value, a value of uh, minus 445, and you can see that here inside of our graph editor, and I set this keyframe at the very start of the scene. And then at the end of the scene, I set another keyframe, this time with a positive value 440, and there it is over here in the graph editor. And then what Blender does is just frame by frame, between the first keyframe to the next keyframe, it continually adjusts the value of the X position until it gets to that final value. And the way it's set up for this blue color strip is that it animates or interpolates in a linear fashion, so a straight line. This green color strip, on the other hand, uses a curve. It's a Bezier curve. And that's why uh, what we see when we hit the play button is that it starts off slow and then it moves at a fairly consistent rate and then it starts slowing down before it gets to that final position. Okay, so that was animation in a nutshell. Now, one extra thing I want to mention is how you would kind of hold the animation, freeze the animation for a period of time. And that's with setting additional keyframes. So as an example, let's say with this blue color strip, we have it animating until this point. Let's say, for example, we want it to stop right here and not move any further for a couple seconds. To do that, what you would do is within the strip of properties, you set a keyframe at this point, so press the I key, or you can just click on that button there. And then you will have to set another keyframe with that exact same value uh, further along in your timeline. So let's say, so that value is minus 203. So let's go to about this point and I'll set another one now, minus 203. And I will click the button this time. There we go. So now within the graph editor, you can see what I've done is I have added two additional keyframes. So it will animate for, until this point and then it won't do a thing for that set of frames and then it will continue its animation after that point. Okay, so I like to refer to that as just setting a hold keyframe. I'm sure there's a better term for that, but that's what I call it to myself. Uh, and there you go. So that's animation. Now let's go back and talk about how we're going to animate the masks. Okay, so let's talk about the easy sort of animation first, just turning the mask on and off as we need it. See, this elder sprite mask that I have here, I only want to use it between the frames uh, as marked by these two markers here, getting up and end. 
So just for this portion of the entire scene. I don't want it in effect over here or over here. It just doesn't make sense. So the way to do it is to animate the visibility of the mask modifier. And that's by working with this button here that says mute. So what we want to do then is before uh, we need it, just click this button to turn it off. So it goes from an open eye to a closed eye. And you can see it's no longer in effect here. And now we'll press the I key so that we have a keyframe set at this point in time before we need it. And Blender will know that it'll stay off until we turn it on and set another keyframe. So to get to that exact point when I need it, I'll go to the marker menu, jump to next marker. Uh, that's a nice way of jumping around inside of your timeline. Uh, and now we will click on this button again. So now the mask is in effect. And it is now an orange color to indicate that we still have to take the final step of pressing I to set that keyframe and it'll turn yellow. So now the keyframe is in effect. So if I go back with the arrow keys, you can see it's off and then now it's on. And it'll stay on until we turn it off and set the next keyframe, which will be over here. So again, I'll go to marker, jump to next marker, and I still want it in effect here, so I'll just go push on the right arrow key. This is where I want it off. So I'll click that button one last time, press the I key, and there. So this we have now animated the status of the mask. So it's off at this point, and then it's on here, and then it's off again for the rest of the scene. Okay, so with that done, let's go ahead and get back into the movie clip editor now, which is in the masking workspace. And uh, with this uh, back on, let's adjust the layout. Because now that we're animating, we definitely want to be able to see the dope sheet editor, which we had previously hidden. It was over here. So just click and drag to bring that down. Uh, and this is the compositor, we don't need that. So let's click and drag this over. So we get all our space here. And we can also bring up the timeline editor at the bottom, just if we wanted to be able to see the different markers that we had established. And there they are over there. So that's where we're working in here. Okay. And one final thing we will want to do is go into the mask display for the movie clip editor and turn off overlay. Because now that we want to animate the masks as in like moving them around and such, it would be great to actually see the things that you're trying to mask. So before we start working with the masks, just want to talk quickly about the markers which we've been using in the animation demo. I zoom in on that a little bit. Um, again, so they're very handy to have because then you can easily see within the timeline uh, where you need to animate from. Uh, and uh, if you wanted to set up your own markers, like let's say for example there was an important event happening over here, what you can do is go to the marker menu and say add marker or just press the letter M on your keyboard. Once you do that, it creates a marker here and the name it gives it is based off of the frame number so f for frame underscore 5053 which matches up to the current frame we're on if you wanted to change that to something more meaningful again you go back to the marker menu and say rename marker and then you can call it whatever you want so i'll just call this demo press enter and there you go and as i showed you before to get to any one of the other markers, you can just go to marker and then jump to previous or next marker. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is go back one more so that I'm at this point. So let's start by talking about simple animations to masks where we really just need to move uh, a mask around, maybe make it a little bit larger or smaller to match up to the movements of a character through the scene. So for this part of the session, we're going to focus on our three sprite mask, which is a mask composed of three layers, uh, each one providing uh, the mask for a specific character on the screen. 
Now what we're going to do is just scrub through the uh, footage to see how we need to animate. And then uh, knowing that what's going to happen is when we set our keyframes, Blender will automatically adjust the position or size of our masks from the first keyframe to the next. Uh, the idea is if we can just try and find uh, generally how the character moves, then we'll set those keyframes and hope for some kind of linear motion, and then Blender will do the rest through its interpolation. Okay, so let's go ahead now, and I'm just going to scrub from this first marker to the end. And it looks like, and you know what? I'm gonna zoom in on this character. We're gonna start, we're gonna go left to right. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna scrub. It looks like there's not much movement there, so we don't need to worry about that. Let's go before that though. So, oh, definitely you can see that, well, the character is standing still, but the camera is moving. So we definitely need to animate from about this point, if we want to keep censoring this character's face, about here until here. Okay, so now that we've identified where uh, we want to animate, Let's go ahead and set a marker right here. I'm going to press the letter M and then control M as the shortcut. And this is where it starts for the three sprites. Let's start. So this, I need to start animating at that point. Okay, so let's talk about how you would actually set keyframes here. When it comes to doing uh, animation within the movie clip editor, what you want to do is turn on this button here that says auto keying. You click that button, it'll turn blue. And that means that from this point on, whenever you touch the mask at all, it will set a keyframe. Uh, so you don't have to press the letter I every single time you make a switch. As soon as you do something like uh, move it or scale it or rotate, it will automatically set a keyframe for you. It's very convenient. Uh, but if you did want to set a keyframe, for example, if you wanted to hold something in place for a while, then you can press the letter I to do that, and that'll establish a keyframe for you. So looking at what we have here, the mask was already set up in position for when we were at this point. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just get to here and make sh and then set are a keyframe here and then jump back to the other point and, and set a keyframe there. When it comes to using a mask that has multiple layers, Blender offers a set of buttons here that we can use to make sure that we're really just focusing in on one layer at a time. So I said I wanted to work with the left sprite first, and that's uh, this layer here that I've called left sprite. If we look at these buttons, the first one says restrict view. If I click that, you can see now it has, we can't even see the mask anymore. So that's usually something that I leave on because I still want to know where it is. This middle one is the one we really want to use, restrict select. What that means is when it's off, then you cannot select the different points and then therefore you cannot manipulate it. So for this first step of animating the left sprite, I'm going to click to turn it off for the other layers. That means now when I press the letter A to select everything, I don't have to worry that I'm uh, manipulating anything with the other mask layers. Okay, so let's go ahead and animate this now by setting a keyframe. Uh, you can do that from over here. You can go to mask, and if you scroll down right there, you can click that button, insert key, or press the letter I, which I will do now. Okay, so I press that. So now we should have a keyframe over here. If I press the home key within the dope sheet editor, there it is. This little diamond shape here, that is our indication that we have a keyframe at this point. And if I expand this out, we'll see that it is for the left sprite. Okay, so now let's use the marker menu or the marker menu up here and jump to the marker that I had just set. Okay, and then let's pan. So this is where we need to set, well, our first keyframe really in order of uh, appearance. So to set it again, because we have auto keying enabled, all I need to do is just move this mask. So I'll press 
the G key, you could also go up here and click on move, but it's faster to just press the G key. So I have it pressed, so now I can just shift the mask over and then left click to place. And that's it. So there you go. So now I have my two keyframes. What we can do now is just scrub along here and see how well Blender handles that motion. Okay, so I'm going to click and you can see it, it isn't working fantastic. Uh, and that's because the mask is moving in a linear fashion, whereas the camera is not. So we need to add some additional keyframes. Just figure out where it looks like we need to add, put those keyframes in place, and then keep scrubbing through and checking how well does it, does it work. So I'm going to press the G again, move that up. And just like normal animation inside of the video sequence editor, you can use the up and down arrow keys to jump between your keyframes. So I will press the down arrow key to jump back to the start. And then now uh, I'll just use my right arrow key to scrub. See, so now that I have that keyframe set, that worked really well. And let's keep using the arrow key. Okay, so not quite. So I'll set another one here. Press the down arrow key to jump back to that previous keyframe and then scrub again. Not bad. And how about here? Mm, not great. Okay, so let's back it up. Press the G key again over here. Okay, and down, down, okay. And scrub again. That's pretty good. Okay, so that, that's pretty much how it works. Uh, so just going back and forth, figuring out where you want to set a keyframe, setting it, checking out the results. And once you're happy with that, then you can move on. So in this case, let's jump back to the video editor. So video editing, and let's see how that looks. So that was this one over here. So I'll just scrub through here and you can see, there we go. So that worked pretty well. Let's go ahead and quickly do the other two and then we'll talk about uh, deforming the, the mask because that's what we're gonna have to do with this character here. So I'll go back to masking uh, and now we're gonna work on the middle sprite. So that's this one here with the square mask. So that means I'll select this mask layer and then I will enable selection by clicking that button and then disable it from that one. Okay, so now we have it set up. I'll press the A key to have it, make sure it's selected. Uh, and once again, uh, you know what, we're gonna jump to next marker here and I will press the I key. Actually, maybe this time I'll go down and I'll click on insert key. So there we go. Now we have under middle sprite, we have our keyframe set up there. Okay, and now let's just scrub and figure out where we need to set that first keyframe. Okay, right about there, I think. Yeah, okay, here. So this is where we need to set our first one. So I'll just press G to grab, bring it down. And now let's just scrub through to see how well that worked. I'm thinking we can probably use the time positions of the uh, keyframes we had set for the left sprite as a guide here. So let's go ahead and set a keyframe here at this same frame. And let's go ahead and jump over to, to this one here. That was it. And set one there. Okay, and then let's back it up. Okay, the arrow keys not quite working for me right now but uh, no problem we can just use the mouse or the left and right arrow keys and scrub through okay great that's good enough for me uh, let's finish the job with the right one so the final mask layer so we will uncheck that check that okay we have that selected right press a okay so uh, once again i will jump to the next marker and I will establish a keyframe here for our final layer. It doesn't quite show up, so let me just expand this dope sheet. Okay, yeah, there it is. All right, and then once again, let's just jump back to about here. Okay, this is where we likely need to set our keyframe. Okay, at this point, so I will press G and then left click to place it down there scrub along 
and looks like we already need to set another one okay up here so again we're kind of matching up to the rest of the layers we had established okay another one right there okay and let's back it up and see how that looked okay not bad not bad not bad okay that needs to adjust a little bit more like that okay right and and that is pretty much it so in addition to just moving it you can also scale it as i said so for example uh let's say right over here we wanted it larger at this point i can press the letter s and then make it larger and you'll see then if we jump back to this point then you can see that the mask is growing over time because we had set it up that way all right, so we've talked about how you can just move an entire mask around just to line up to the new position of the character over time. Let's talk about changing a mask entirely. And for that, we'll switch back to the Elder Sprite. And now this is an interesting example because uh, we don't need to just move the mask. If we also need to change the shape. So if I press the right arrow key to move on to the next frame, you can see it went from this sort of like a smile shape into, well, what we need next is something more like a circle. So some things to know about this, it works in pretty much the same way as just moving the entire mask, right? You set a keyframe and Blender will automatically adjust. Um, one thing I do want to tell you about is typically you, you will not want to add or remove points as part of your animation. It can be done, um, but the results are kind of weird. I've never had much success with it, so I just make sure I, I always have all the points I need right from the start before I begin animating. Okay, so let's get started here. Uh, just like with uh, normal moves, we want to make sure we have keyframes set. So let's back it up one frame and establish a keyframe right here because we want it to have that shape. And so let's go ahead and click on insert key. So there we go, we have our first keyframe. And now we'll go one frame forward and start working. So all we need to do really is zoom in a bit and literally just change the points. So recall we have actually two sets of points and colored lines here. Uh, the white line represents the actual mask, whereas the green line uh, represents the feathering of that mask. So what we wanna do is just focus on the points for the white lines, the true mask. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just click and drag each of these points bit by bit to shift them into the correct place, but then also kind of get the correct shape that we need going forwards. You can see as I click each one of these over, um, and we can even do box select, I can press B to select all of these and then move them all at once, except that didn't work out so well for that one. So maybe I will not select those. I'll just select these. There we go, that's better. Um, you can see that as I move the mask points, then the feathering points will also move along with it. So we don't need to worry about that. But if I were to select a point for the feather, uh, that changes just the feather one. So let's press Control Z to undo that and start moving these ones instead. Okay, so I'll just quickly try and finish the job here. So this time I will do a box select on these and then grab them all at once. Oops, and then one last one. There we go. All right, so all of the different points, they've been modified now. So now we have a more of a circular shape. If I use the left arrow key to jump back, you can see that does work out pretty well. And then from this point, we can just animate in the same fashion that we did before. So for example, I'll scrub along here and just see where it needs to go. Okay, so you can see that after getting the, the shape in place, it can stay more or less the same until this point 
and that's when the character is going to start moving down. So here we're going to set that hold keyframe so that it doesn't actually move. So let's set a keyframe right about here. Actually, maybe right there. Okay, so I will press the letter I. Actually, make sure I have all the points selected first. Okay, I'll press the letter I. Okay, so now we have our hold keyframe set so that it doesn't move. And at this point, now we can set another keyframe. Let's go ahead and set, okay, he seems to stop moving right about here. So let's set a keyframe at this point in time, just by dragging this over. And looks like we also need to scale it. So I'll press S and expand it out. Okay. And now let's hit the down arrow key to jump back to there and just use the, our right arrow key to see how well that worked. It's not bad. Maybe over here we need to bring it down a little bit faster. Okay, and let's just scrub with the mouse this time. All right, so that wasn't too bad. Um, not perfect, but this is just a demonstration. Uh, there are two more things I want to talk about today. The first is another way of hiding or you know disabling a mask temporarily. We've seen that happen uh, by turning it on or off as a strip modifier. But the other thing you can do is just take that mask and move it off the screen. So for example, let's look at the three sprite mask, uh, this one in particular. We know that after this point, this is when if I move one more frame over, now we don't need it anymore because we're seeing the backs of them. We're not seeing their faces. Do not need to censor anything. So we, we know we have a keyframe here. Well, maybe we don't. So let's press the I key here. And then in this next portion, I just need to shift this mask over. Press the G key, move it off. It will no longer be in effect within the video sequence editor. Let's see that in action. So I'm going to go to video editing. Uh, hit the home button here. And yeah, you can see there. So here, this checkerboard shows us this is where that middle layer was in effect for the middle sprite, but no problems over here because we moved that off so we can see this. It's not being impacted. If I hit the left arrow key, there it is there in effect, uh, but not over here. So that is one easy way to make sure your masks are not in use when you don't need them without having to click on the eyeball within the uh, strip modifiers. Uh, the last thing to talk about is about the mask modifiers again. So let's go back to here. And what I've been saying this whole time about using absolute versus mask time, um, I remember having an instance where I had taken a lot of time to prepare a mask and it just wouldn't work until uh, I turned mask time to absolute from relative. I can't remember how, the exact uh, context there and I can't find notes on it either. So when it comes to mask time then, let's just say you should probably keep it at relative unless you find that it's not actually um, in effect when you think it should be. I do have a demo I can show you. Okay, so really quickly, here we see that same animation demo I had before. And here I've set up this one mask so that it basically follows the motion of the blue color strip at the top. In the video sequence editor, um, I've applied it as a mask modifier. So with the default value of relative, the timing of how the mask animates is relative to the start time of the strip itself. So if we grab this strip and move it forwards on the timeline, then the animation of the mask will still work fine. Whereas if we turn it to absolute instead, now it's based off of frame one of the scene. So using a uh, mask time of relative is probably what you want for most cases. And just change it if you find that it's not actually animating the way you expect it to. So keep it at relative. Never mind what I said in those other videos. Okay, so that's it for this session, how to animate your masks. Uh, I hope you did enjoy that. If you did, please do give it a like and subscribe so you can see more content when it comes. Thanks and bye now.